In this lecture, we're going to look at um, the various types of economic systems, and we're going to talk about the social goals that all economic systems um, have and incorporate into the way that they do life, and um, those goals are prioritized based upon what's important to the people living in each type of system and reflected in, in each of those systems. So we're going to take a look at kind of how this all comes together today. Just to get us thinking about this topic, um, take a look at this picture here. Phil's Grocery Store, we carry what you want is their slogan. Um, and these people are obviously shoppers in the grocery store. The scene is pretty familiar to us. You know, it looks like the aisle at Cub Foods or Rainbow or wherever you do your shopping. But contrast that to this, the People's Grocery Store. Uh, you'll see that the captions say, just arrived, new products from the government distribution center. Hey, they only have paper towels. I don't need any more paper towels. At least they're cheap. And then we have this guy back here. Hey, what are we all waiting in line for? So these people are supposed to represent uh, people in the former Soviet Union lining up to get um, their allocations, their rations. And... Um, you know, this is a scene that's pretty unfamiliar to us, but it's a first-come, first-served type of distribution system. So let's think about the pros and cons of each and, and how these are similar to and different from one another. Um, in Phil's grocery store, the individual consumers get to decide what they leave the store with. You know, when I go to Cub, I decide what I want to spend my money on and what I'm going to cook for dinner, and I pay for it and I leave. Um, at the People's Grocery Store, the government makes that decision for the people based on what they are deciding to distribute at that, you know, at that point in time. Um, one of the big advantages of Phil's Grocery Store is that, you know, consumers have choices about what they want to purchase. Whereas at the People's Grocery Store, you know, there, are, there aren't those choices. You just get whatever's there if you're lucky enough to be at the front of the line and get some before they're gone. But the products are cheaper in the people's grocery store and probably a little bit more expensive at Phil's. Uh, even though prices are maybe a little higher at Phil's, most of us would probably prefer to shop at Phil's grocery store and have um, that element of choice. So those cartoons represented two different types of economic systems. An economic system is a method used by society to produce and distribute goods and services. To form an economic system, a society must answer three very important questions. Um, we did talk about these questions in the introduction to um, scarcity, choice, and cost, so this should be review. These should be familiar to you. Um, these three key economic questions, once again, are the allocation question, the production question, and the distribution question. The allocation question being what goods and services will be produced. So how are we going to allocate our scarce resources? Um, what are we going to use our resources for? What are we going to make? How are we going to do it? And who's going to get the stuff that we make? For whom will the goods and services be produced? So every group of people has to answer these three key questions. And once again, it's not um, the the manner or, or the, the answer that they give to these questions that's important to know, but it's who is responsible for making these decisions. Who has the, the decision-making power in answering these questions? That's what's important in differentiating um, the economic systems from one another. Uh, the way a society answers those three key questions and who, you know, who gets to answer them and who has the power to answer them depends on the economic aspirations and social values of that community of people. So this is where those economic values and goals come in. Um, the values and goals that we'll talk about here are freedom, equity, growth, stability, security, and efficiency. And this slide... Um, has a nice description of what each of these are. So um, it may be helpful just to pause the lecture and read through this so that this makes sense to you. I don't need to read it to you. And once again, the way that those values and goals are ranked helps determine what type of economic system a society falls under. Um, and the three basic types of economic systems are traditional, market, and command. Um, however, most societies today have what we call a mixed economy. Even the United States, we're a mixed market economy because we are uh, tr 
primarily a market economy, but we do have some government intervention, so we're technically a mixed economy. There are very few societies that are, are just a traditional or just a market or just a command economy um, in this day and age. So, again, what's important to know about these economic systems is, is you know, the pros and cons of each and who has the decision-making power, who holds the power to answer those three key questions. So in a traditional economy, um, the decisions are going to be answered the way they've always been answered. So custom and tradition are going to dictate um, what is produced, how it's done, and who gets what, whatever's produced. So examples of traditional um, economic societies or groups of people would be like the Yanomamo of South America or Native American tribal groups before... Um, you know, before the Europeans came to North America. And traditional economic systems are, are not um, around much anymore because, you know, when the whole goal is to stay the way you've always been and not change, you don't keep up with the rest of the world and you kind of get left in the dust. So Amish, um, Amish people, Mennonites are, are another example of maybe some people who hold on to as many of those traditional aspects as possible, even though they live, you know, in an, a, a broader economic system that's maybe not 100% traditional. Um, the market economy, in the market economy, um, individual producers and consumers get to answer those three, three key economic questions based on... Um, the purchases and the sales that are made. So voluntary exchange is going to dictate what is produced, how it's produced, and who gets the goods. And usually in market economies, money is the deciding factor. So whoever is willing and able to pay the most for a good will get that good. And for businesses, whoever is willing and able to produce the good for the given market price will be able to sell that good. And um, Adam Smith had a theory called the invisible hand of the market economy and that theory holds that this invisible hand of self-interest is what drives the market economy and keeps it keeps it rolling. Um, we don't need a government entity to make decisions for the people because when individuals make decisions based on their own self-interest um, everybody's happy and resources are used efficiently and so um, we'll talk more about that in class. But the centrally planned or command economy is a system where an authority, a central authority, or a ruler who's either elected or unelected is in charge and making the decision. So this could be a king or a queen, or it could be someone who's elected to that position, or it could be a dictator who takes over by force. Um, but there's one person or a small group of people who are making decisions for everybody, assigning people to jobs, telling them where they'll work, um, deciding what they'll get paid, and making all the decisions for the people. So... Um, there are just a few centrally planned economies really left in this day and age. North Korea, Cuba, um, just to name a couple. So, And then the mixed market economy, m most countries in the world have mixed economies because most economic systems involve um, pieces of, you know, two or more of these, these three basic systems that we've just described. All right, this slide has um, some information about how these broad social goals are reflected and interpreted in a command economic system versus in a market economic system. Um, and once again, I, will, I would suggest that you pause the lecture and take some time to read through this, just so this kind of makes sense to you. We can talk about questions that you have in class. All right, and the last slide here just um, highlights some of the 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 good things about a market economy, um, why a market economy is efficient. Um, the rest of this class we're going to spend analyzing the market or market-based economic system. So some of the reasons why the market economy is um, really kind of prevailing in the world as the, the economic system of choice would be um, that Individuals who live in market economies are able to engage in self-interested behavior, which is human nature anyway. So, you know, when people spend their money on the things, that, only on the things that they want and they think are a good deal, then producers are going to produce those things that people want to buy because producers, being self-interested, are only going to produce things that they can make a profit producing. And therefore, our resources are used efficiently in that we're using our resources for the things that the people in the society want them to be used for. So... People can act in that self-interested way. That invisible hand of self-interest is going to guide the market behavior. Um, there's competition. 
because there's no one in charge telling people what they have to spend their money on or telling businesses what they have to produce, the market forces of competition are going to encourage better prices for consumers, better quality products, etc. Um, private property rights. This is very important because if, if you and I were not able to own our own property, um, we wouldn't take care of things and our resources the way that we do. Um, in many societies, if the government owns all the factors of production, um, those factors are not cared for, are not used um, as efficiently as possible, and are not, you know, um, just not, not taken care of. So that's very important. Com consumer sovereignty is important because the consumer kind of holds the power, really, to this, this whole um, puzzle. And again, we're, the market is based on voluntary exchange. So you don't ever have to do something that you don't want to do or that you don't think is a good deal and that, that you don't view as a win for you. You know, businesses aren't going to sell products that they don't want to sell and consumers aren't going to buy products they don't want to buy. The system of markets and prices is important because supply and demand in the market is going to fluctuate um, causing prices to rise and fall when things change. Um, in command economic systems, one of the, one of the big problems is that um, if there's a hiccup in the system, the government or the central authority doesn't react to that, and um, secondary effects occur that cause huge break breakdowns in the production lines and in the, in the production plans. So the system of markets and prices um, allows related markets to react to one another when prices change. And finally, specialization. Um, we talked about this when we talked about the theory of comparative advantage, but in a market economy, individuals are able to specialize in production of what they do best or what they can do with the, the lowest opportunity cost, um, therefore allowing a higher standard of living for everyone who lives in the society and um, also allow, allowing higher quality products to be produced since people who are pros at, at engaging in that production are going to be the ones producing those products and services. Ooh, one more. I thought we were done. Here we go. Limited government involvement. <laughs> this is important because um, we, we do need the government to, to play some roles in the market economy. Like I said, we have a, a technically a mixed market economy here in the United States. Um, there, there is a place for government in the economic system. A pure market economy does have some shortfalls, um, but we, we don't have too much government involvement. Well, I guess that's debatable, um, but most people would say, for the most part, we value our freedom, and the government you know, plays a pretty hands-off approach, giving us the power to make many choices ourselves, and, and people really appreciate that. All right, we're going to be doing um, an activity in class that that allows you to experience what production and life is like in each of these economic systems. And there's also a reading in your practice problem packet that um, explains a little bit more about these systems. And it's a good idea to take a look at that. And there's some um, comprehension questions that go along with that just to make sure that you understand the differences between these systems and understand how these um, economic social values and goals are reflected in the systems. So all right, we'll see you in class.